Hey, what's up everybody? This is Audrey. Welcome back to our video course, Networking with URL Session. In the previous video, we created tasks to download data from a server. Get tasks can be created from a URL because the default request method is get. To upload to a server with post or put, we'll need to create a request, set its method, header fields, and HTTP body properties, then create the task from the request. In this part of the course, we'll learn about URL requests and HTTP headers, then create a URL session data task that makes a POST request on a REST API. We'll also build an Alamo Fire-inspired POST router enum to streamline the creation of URL requests. Let's get started. A networking app sends requests to servers. The workflow to do that starts with a session configuration, unless you use the shared session, which uses the default configuration. You can customize the configuration, then create a session with that configuration. The session creates tasks. Each task is created with a URL or with a URL request, which is created with a URL. The task, and hence the request, uses the settings in the session's configuration, but the request can override some of the configuration's settings. You create a URL request from a URL. There's also an initializer that, that, you that lets you specify cache policy and timeout interval values that are different from the session configurations. There are two main reasons for creating a request. The first is to modify the HTTP method, headers, and body before sending the request. The default HTTP method is get, so you must create a request to post, put, or delete. Post and put need an HTTP body. We'll talk about HTTP headers on the next slide. The second reason is to override configuration settings for this request. A value set on the request usually overrides the value from the session configuration. For example, the request can specify a different network service type, and that's the value the system will use for that request. However, if the configuration's value is more restrictive, it will take precedence. For example, if the session configuration has set allow cellular access to false, setting it to true in a request will not override that value. Conversely, if the configuration allows cellular access, a request can disallow it. HTTP headers pass additional information with a request or response. Header names are case insensitive and values must not contain line breaks. Headers can be grouped into four contexts. General headers apply to both requests and responses. Cache control max age equals seconds is how long a resource will be considered fresh. Connection keep alive keeps the connection open for subsequent requests. Request headers can be used in HTTP requests. Accept application JSON tells the server the client can understand JSON. XStormPath agent is a custom proprietary header that we'll use in the video on authentication. It specifies the software version of the requesting software user agent. Response headers can be used in HTTP responses. Age is the time an object has been in a proxy cache. Server is the software used to handle the request. Entity headers describe the content of the body. Content language indicates the intended audience, not necessarily the language used for the content. Content encoding is how the content was compressed. There's a link to Mozilla Developer Network's HTTP headers article in the links file. In the introductory video, I mentioned Alamo Fire's URL request convertible protocol, which lets you define an enum to create URL requests for your app's interactions with a REST API. Now you know what goes into a request, it's not hard to see how it could be encapsulated in an enum. The cases are all possible requests you'd want to make on the API, like get all or create. You set the base endpoint that all the request endpoints build on. The method property returns get, post, etc., depending on the case, and the workhorse method as URL request builds the request endpoint, sets up the request parameters, and creates the request. In the challenge, you'll finish building a request router enum for the JSON server API. Unlike Alamo Fire's protocol, you have to explicitly call this method, but it will still tidy up your code. In the previous video, we worked with get data tasks. 
get is the default method for URL request, so we could create the data task directly from the URL. Here's one without the completion handler because we're only going to look at the properties of its current request property. They'll all have default values except for the URL. Let's run the playground to see. The URL is as you'd expect. Description is just the URL string. Method is the default get. Allow cellular access is true. What happens if I try and set it to false? get an error. Cannot assign to property current request is get only. Okay, HTTP should handle cookies is also true. And the timeout interval is 60 seconds. You can hold down the option key and click on these properties to see their description. The default is to use cellular data as well as Wi-Fi and the default is to store and handle cookies. Store and send cookies. More about this in a later video. And the default interval between load activity is 60 seconds. No useful information appears for these next two properties, but if we inspect current request itself with the show inspector, show result button, we see the cache policy raw value defaults to zero, which is use protocol cache policy. The protocol is usually HTTP. We'll look at cache policy in a future video. And we haven't set any HTTP header fields, so the task uses default values for the headers accept encoding, accept, and accept language. The defaults are usually okay for GET tasks, but you'll need to create and configure a URL request to set header fields for other tasks. Now let's create a data task with URL request. First, create a request. Inspect it and it looks just like the GET tasks request. Notice I've declared it as a var because we're going to modify its properties. For example, we can specify non-default cache policy or network service type. A common customization is to access the network only on Wi-Fi. It's faster, less battery drain, and it preserves the user's data quota. When the request is ready, you can create the data task. Let's just check the task's HTTP method property. It's get, because that's the default for requests. And we actually want to create a post request. And we want to send JSON, not an encoded form. A post task sends data. So here's a codable post struct. And we can JSON encode a post object for the request's HTTP body. Now we have a problem when we're creating a post object to send to the database because the database determines what the ID is and we can't specify that in advance. So we'll just comment that part out for now and our post will just have author and title properties. Again, we use a do try catch statement and we'll set the request HTTP body to the encoder's output. And we have to catch the error and print it. Uh, 
OK, now let's just check those task request properties. Ah, just checking that setting shows that we should have set up the request completely before creating the task. So we'll just create another task now that we have a complete request. We'll just put the usual beginning stuff up here to do some, make sure that we've got data and response and such things. For a post task, the successful status code is 201 created. Now we'll decode, JSON decode the response. So the JSON decoded response should be just the post that we sent to the JSON server. Let's just check the request properties. The HTTP body has 42 bytes, and let's inspect it show some binary data. OK, so now just remember to check that your JSON server is running in the terminal. So we're going to resume the task, but I also want to check the HTTP body after it's run. So let's have a, put that down first. And now we just uh, resume the task. And let's go ahead and run the playground. And here we see that the decoder has decoded the response, the response being the post that we sent up to the database. And down here we see that after the post task has run, the HTTP body is, is nil. There's nothing there. Now we have a challenge waiting for you. In the demo, we created a new post on JSON server. Your challenge is to build a post router enumeration, then use it to create a put request to modify the new post. Follow the instructions in the challenge starter playground. If you get stuck or you have problems, check out the challenge solution video. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time. This first page shows the standard way to construct a put request. You create it with a URL. You set its HTTP method. And you set the header and body. On the second page, of this playground, you will use the post router enumeration to do this all in one line. But first, we have to complete this enumeration in sources postrouter.swift. So if you have a look at the project navigator, there's a sources folder, and in it, there's a postrouter.swift file. And it has two structs for post objects, one without the ID property, and that was for encoding post and put requests because at that point we don't know, well, for post requests, we don't know what the ID is going to be. For put requests, we're going to pass that number in in a different way. And here we have a struct with ID, post with ID, and it's for when we decode the responses that come back and we want to see what the IDs are. The enumeration cases are 
the requests that you can send to your web service. Get all, get a specific post, uh, create a post, and update or delete a specific post. And this is our base URL string for accessing posts, post objects. And here's our first to-do. You need to set up the HTTP method for each case. And that's just a matter of putting in the strings. So get should say get create is post. You create using a post, you update using a put, and you delete using delete. Here's the main workhorse of this enumeration, and it's the as URL request function, and it mimics uh, what the Alamo Fire method does, which basically builds up the request. So first you need to set up the relative path, whether it should use the ID or not. And in the case of get all and create, it doesn't put the ID in. But in the case of updating and deleting and getting a specific ID, then you do have to add something to the relative path. And that's just the ID value. The next thing this function does is it goes ahead and it sets up the request parameters. And then the next to do's are to actually create the requests using the parameters and the relative path. So here we have a var request created from the URL. And we just need to, first of all, set the HTTP method. And that's our method var that was set up here with the different cases. So that's request HTTP method. We then need to add any headers. Normally, Xcode is a bit more helpful than that in auto-completing. OK, the next thing you have to do is set up the HTTP body. And that involves using a JSON encoder and, and all the do, try, catch things. Let's give us a bit more room. So first we check whether the post has parameters. And if not, then we just return the request as is. Otherwise, we get a JSON encoder, and we try to encode the post. And then we return the request. So that's our post router done. Let's just go back to the second playground page. So the idea here is to use the post router to create the request in just two lines. So we have here the original put URL and the put request. And first of all, we're going to create the post object and then create the request. We have to explicitly call as URL request because we're not using AlamoFire's URL request convertible protocol. Down here is the same data task code from page one. That's not going to change. Check that your JSON server is running. And then run this playground. And we can double check the result by getting all the posts. And there's our update to post number one. 